Okay, so here we're going to finish off our uh, partial fractions problem, and we reduced it to uh, this uh, integral at, uh, in the last video. So what I've kind of done is I've, breaking them, uh, I've broken it up into sort of three different integrals, and I'm just going to evaluate each one sort of a piece at a time. And, you know, the final answer, you would just stick them all, you know, you would add them all back, all the solutions back together, and that would be our final solution. The first two are pretty typical, we've seen. The third one's actually going to involve kind of a, a, a new idea that we haven't quite looked at yet. So, uh, but let's start with the first one first. Uh, this one's easy. We can just do a u substitution. We'll let u equal x plus 3. du would be dx. We've seen these examples. We would basically just get, uh, when we integrate, you know, you could pull the 11 over 100 out. Uh, and we'll just end up getting the natural logarithm of x plus 3. So the first one isn't, isn't too bad at all. The second one to integrate, uh, we would have to actually break this, uh, this uh, function up a little bit more, this integral up a little bit more. So I'm going to make that negative 11 over 100x over x squared plus 1. And then we would also integrate, uh, I'm going to pull the 33 over 100 out, and then again 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So to get the first part, we would just do a u substitution. We would let u equal x squared plus 1. du is going to be 2x dx. And if we just replace the x dx, um, you know, we could multiply both sides here by 1 half to get an expression for x dx. So to integrate uh, the first one, we could pull the negative 11 over 100 out. Uh, the x dx, we could replace that with a 1 half... Uh, du, and then we would just have u in the denominator. The second one, uh, we can just use our arctangent formula on. So when we integrate, let's see, I guess we would get um, negative 11 over 200. We would get the natural logarithm of u, which is x squared plus 1. Plus, then we would have 33 over 100. And we could just use our arctangent formula here. Uh, the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1 would be arctangent of x, and again, plus c, um, you know, so, but again, you can just stick the plus c somewhere at the end once we've kind of integrated all the functions. So that would be the, the, the antiderivative of the second, uh, the second integral here. Okay, so not too bad, um, and then we're kind of left with the third one here. This is the one that's going to be a little more involved and will involve a new idea again. So the last one I would just break this up um, the same way. So I'm going to pull the negative 10 over 100 out. x over x squared plus 1 squared dx. And then plus, let's see, the 30 over 100. Again, you can make that 3 tenths if you want. Uh, the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 squared dx. So to do the first part, it's just going to be a u substitution, like we uh, have already been doing. So we can let u equal x squared plus 1. du is going to be 2x dx. Well, we've got the x dx in there. We can just multiply both sides by 1 half. So let's see. We've got negative 1 over 100, or equivalently negative 1 over 10. Um, the x dx we're going to replace with the 1 half. In the denominator, we would have u squared. And again, the x dx is just our 1 half uh, du. And the second part, again, is going to be kind of the tricky one. So let's come back to that one in a second. So we've got negative 1 over 20, uh, the antiderivative of u to the negative second du. So when we integrate, we'll get negative 1 over 20. Uh, we would get u to the negative first over negative 1. Again, normally we get plus c. I'm just going to tack it on at the very end. So this would be a positive. We would have 1 over u when we put it back into the denominator, which would give us 1 over x squared plus 1. And again, still we would be integrating, you know, we would have to integrate our other function here. So our thir or 30 over 100 1 over x squared plus 1 squared dx. That's kind of the part that we still haven't integrated. So we've done everything now except for this integral. So let's see. 
So let's integrate this last little piece, and again, then you could just stick them all together, and that would be your solution. So, um, you know, 300 over, 30 over 100, that's just 3 over 10. And so we've got 1 over x squared plus 1 quantity squared dx. So to integrate this part, we do what's called a trig substitution. So maybe you've seen these and maybe not. It's just a kind of a different type of a substitution. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this back into a trig integral. So what we can do is we're going to use the substitution x equals tangent theta. Well, we have to replace our dx as well. So uh, our dx, if we start with tangent theta, we'll get secant squared theta d theta. And now I'm going to replace. So we've got 3 over 10. We would have the integral of 1 over, when I plug in tangent theta, I'll get tangent squared theta plus 1 squared. And again, my dx, I'm going to replace that with secant squared theta d theta. All right, well, now we're going to keep simplifying. So this is where we've got now a trig integral. Tangent squared theta plus 1, that's secant squared theta. Uh, but really it's being squared, so we have, you know, secant squared theta squared, but we have a secant squared theta in the uh, numerator already. So this would be 3 over 10. We've got a secant squared over secant to the fourth. So that would leave us with 1 over secant squared theta d theta. But 1 over secant squared is the same thing as cosine squared theta. Okay. So now we're back to a, tr a trig integral. To integrate uh, cosine squared, we've seen that you have to use an identity. We have to use 1 half, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, d theta. And again, uh, here we can just distribute. So this would be 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2 theta, d theta. So this would be 3 over 10. And when we integrate here, we'll get 1 half theta plus 1 half. We would get sine of 2 theta over 2 when we integrate cosine of 2 theta. We've uh, definitely seen examples like this. And then we would have plus c. You know, so you could even pull the 1 half out, whatever. So this is 3 over 10. We have 1 half theta plus one-fourth sine of two theta. Okay, so now the issue is, though, how do we get our, uh, you know, because we start with x's in this problem, right? We were integrating something involving x, and now we've got something involving theta. So this is kind of the extra little bit as well. We go back to our substitution. So we started with x equals tangent theta. That was our substitution. I'm going to write that as just x over 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little right triangle based on this. So recall tangent of an angle is the opposite over the adjacent. We could label the hypotenuse just using Pythagorean theorem. So we would get 1 squared plus x squared, and then the square root of that. So the hypotenuse would have value the square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, what I want to do is read, uh, I would like to read sine of 2 theta off, but, you know, that's not what my triangle's in terms of. It's just in terms of theta. So we're actually going to do uh, another identity. So we've got 1 half theta plus 1 fourth. Recall an identity for sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta times cosine theta. And again, plus c. And now we can read everything off. Okay, so... Another thing as well, we have tangent of theta equals x. We could take arc tangent of both sides to solve for theta. And now I'm going to start plugging everything in. So we have 3 over 10 times 1 half of theta. But again, theta is arc tangent of x. Let's see, we would have 2 over 4, which would be a half. And again, now we can read sine of theta and cosine of theta off from our triangle. So sine uh, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent, which is 1, over the hypotenuse. And 
you know, we still have our plus C. We could even, you know, clean this up a little bit more. Uh, so this would be 3 over 10, 1 half arctangent of X plus 1 over 2. Well, let's see, we would have X in the numerator. We've got the square root of 1 plus X squared times the square root of 1 plus X squared. That'll leave us with a 1 plus X squared in the denominator. Again, plus C. And now we have integrated this last little bit as well. So, um, whew. so that should be everything. Okay, so definitely I was kind of breaking it down in pieces. So your final answer, you would simply have to put all of this stuff back together. So uh, partial fractions is long. I think this is uh, what it goes to show. So, uh, you know, there's lots of algebra. There's U substitution. There's trig, uh, trig substitutions potentially. So uh, very, very long problems, but again, I hope they make some sense, and I hope it helps you out.